We just came back from the Mosaic District, one of my favorite places in Fairfax County. If you get a chance to go to Mosaic District, you have to try out Ted's Bulletin. They're known for their Pop-Tarts. Scratch made Pop-Tarts. Scratch made Pop-Tarts. They also have this delicious, huge, humongous carrot cake. And then there also is... Their tater tots. The That's tater what you tots. really go there for. The I go for the Pop-Tarts, you go for the tater tots. Yes, they have these <laughs> cube tater tots that are just super delicious. Oddly enough, this video is not about Ted's Bulletin, although we do love Ted's Bulletin. Ted's Bulletin is located in the Mosaic District, which is in Fairfax. This is a really confusing thing about Fairfax County, mm -hmm. is that a lot of different places, or Northern Virginia in general, a lot of different places share one name. So we're talking about Fairfax, within Fairfax County. Right. And within Fairfax, there's actually a small city, the city of Fairfax, which is just six square miles, but it's in the center of Fairfax. Super confusing. All of them share the same name. It's really confusing, just like uh, our last video yes. uh, in this series, which was the video on Alexandria, Alexandria, which we have Alexandria City, City of Alexandria. Exactly. The running theme, you'll get familiar with it if, once you move here, but you have to ask for clarity when you're talking to someone about them. Absolutely. And speaking of that last video, this is a series we're doing where we're covering all of the parts of- Our towns. Right, the towns <laughs> uh, of Fairfax County. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video. We'll put a link up here yeah, we'll put a link right up there to the previous video for Alexandria. And we'll also have a link right up here to the playlist uh, for that series. So if you move into the area or even if you live in the area and you just need clarity on the different parts of Fairfax County, like what are things to do in those areas? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Be sure to check out that playlist. Mosaic District has more than just Ted's Bulletin. Abraham, you actually like a couple of different restaurants there. There's that ramen place. Ramen place is called Jinya. Oh, they yeah. have this, uh, what is that? They the have the Karaje. Yes, Karaje. It's like a fried chicken. Yes. Um, but it's like these little uh, chicken thighs that are fried. Uh, yeah, not almost like it's not, not it's not healthy. No, but it's delicious. Nor are the tater tarts or the pop tarts. But right. um, there are a lot of different restaurants in the Mosaic District. Urbano, a few other places, cool cafes. A lot of nice places um, if you're interested in hanging out after hours, like a happy hour scene. It's actually, in my opinion, kind of like a nice little downtown in the middle of the suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, so in addition to all the restaurants, there's also a lot of cool shops. Um, there's a Madewell, Blue Mer Mercury for skincare, Kendra Scott if you're into jewelry. We actually recently just discovered Bloomies, which is like a boutique style Bloomingdale's. Right, actually right over here, if you go a little bit to the right, there's actually that uh, Angelica movie, oh, theater yes, the movie theater and cafe. So it's one of those uh, kind of cool, uh, movie theaters that of course it shows new releases but it also shows like those smaller independent films right. uh, so angelica film center and cafe so there's a cafe on the lower level as well right um so mosaic district is pretty cool they have some big box stores too like if you turn a little bit more right across the street you'll see target is right there on the other side of the uh, other side of mom and pop cafe is actually a target um so yeah there really cool area barnes and noble is just down the street mm -hmm. nice place to just hang out chillax you kind of see this AstroTurf area here. Right. On, I'm surprised that this picture doesn't have a whole bunch more people in it. Right. Because if you go here like five o'clock on like a Wednesday afternoon, it is just going to be it's packed. Packed. It's so packed. many people hanging out, families hanging out. There's actually like a little life size chess set up there. It's mm -hmm. not pictured here, but a life size chess set up. And usually there's just kids outside playing and families hanging out. Where well, is snow on the ground in this photo right here? So oh, okay. That, so that explains why, why people are out right now. <laughs> okay. And there's more more things to do not just in this area I just like mosaic district because I feel like it's a little more a little urban for our area you right. know here in the suburbs uh, but another really cool area to hang out in is going to be uh, Fairfax corner they have uh, some more of your favorite restaurants so Abraham's favorite restaurant group is going to be uh, the great American restaurants yes and in Fairfax corner they actually have one of their Aussie locations there um, and that's another cool place it's more like a high-end town center so not a strip mall it's bigger than a strip mall um, a little more high end but they have some really cool restaurants there again another movie theater and then more of those like big chain stores you used to see in more along the lines of like a loft and like Ann Taylor those kind of stores you know exactly exactly I think the Fairfax area is one of the more densely populated areas as far as commercial developments absolutely now you're not gonna find that many condos in the Fairfax area 
but like as far as like high rises, like you see in like Tyson's, yeah, like Herndon Reston area, you don't see high rises. You see condos more yeah. like that garden style condo exactly. that we see here in Alexandria, less of those high rises that you see, like you said, in like the McLean and Tyson's areas. Exactly. Another thing, uh, since we mentioned the city of Fairfax, mm -hmm. um, we also want to talk a little bit about the Old Town Square, which is an area in Fairfax or city of Fairfax. Mm -hmm. There's just a bunch of different entertainment options there. The venue hosts all kinds of things for the community. Like I said, it's a smaller community only six square miles but they have events um throughout the year including things like their derby queue right they have a fall festival and then during the holidays they have like a lights and caroling situation there mm -hmm. um, and it's just off of the main street in that area so they have like an old town main street again it's a little bit older area um so it has a little bit more laid back chillax feel to it yeah so this is like what you see when you go to this area a lot of brick properties this is all a commercial this is like near the government center here but if you go a little ways over you get to the main street and that area is like almost like kind of sleepy town mm -hmm. um, reminds me a little bit of magazine street back home right yeah this picture here that's on the screen right now this google street view this is where you'll see a lot of the christmas light christmas decoration that you were speaking of mm -hmm. they do a flea market here too right yep that's all i signed for it earlier yeah so so it's a cool cool downtown area it's super small though i mean because even like that main street i feel like it was only a few blocks like right. you know it's just like gone just like that exactly but it's it's a cute quaint area it's not that far from the rest of the fairfax area also you can get to it from tyson's corner from herndon area so yeah i mean it's, it's really it's in the middle of fairfax right. so i mean you're surrounded by fairfax when you're there i guess next we'll move on to a neighborhood that's in city of fairfax because we're going to talk about a couple different places you could live if you're thinking about moving to fairfax the first neighborhood we're going to check out is called mosby woods it's located inside the city of fairfax now, this little area is only 600 properties, but it is the largest community inside the city of Fairfax. So Mosby Woods is gonna be located just south of 66 and it's bordered by Route 50. Um, it's a community made up primarily of single family homes, mainly built in like the late 60s. Really nice wooded area. As Abraham said, it is the largest in the city of Fairfax. And you could expect to pay anywhere from like seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars for a single family home in Mosby Woods. As you can see in Mosby Woods, you have a lot of uh, established homes. You're not going to really see too many or too much new construction in this community because it is such a small area with only 600 homes. There's not really much space to tear down any properties, but you got these established trees, you got uh, sidewalks, which I love sidewalks. They have sidewalks on both sides, <laughs> which is important. And we see some split levels, looks like some split foyers. Mm -hmm. I think we caught up past by a couple of ramblers when we first turned onto the street. So a nice mix of different types of single family homes. Right. Um, again, you can see they're a little bit on the older side. So you're looking at homes that are built, you know, 60, 70 years ago. Plus you're not going to see too many garages, right? So a lot of people are just parking their cars on the street or in their driveway. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind for you Tesla owners. <laughs> That's true. That's true. See if we have any luck in some of the other neighborhoods and finding them homes or garages. The next community on our list is going to be Kings Park West and it's actually located at the southern part of Fairfax. We're going to leave Fairfax City or City of Fairfax to go there. Kings Park West is actually pretty close to George Mason University, as you can see here on the map. They have a variety of different types of homes. So like other parts of Fairfax, you're gonna find condos, townhouses, and single family homes. They're gonna be a little bit on the older side, just like our last subdivision. You're looking at places that were built in like the late 60s to mid 80s. And usually those single family homes are gonna be like three to four bedrooms, single families. Let's see if we find any garages over here. So you see some Ramblers there. Price wise, we're looking at at 600 to 850 price range for these single families. That's today, of course. We have sidewalks on both sides. You know, Abraham Very likes important. that. We love sidewalks. We love sidewalks. Very similar style of home to what you just saw in Mosby Woods. It's gonna be a little bit larger area. So another established community. See a garage. A there, few garages there. There are a couple garages, but really single car garage. And also those garages are gonna be pretty small mm -hmm. because of the time period that these properties were built in. 
and that's why you're seeing a lot of people parking their cars on the street right there. Even though their single car garage are a nice size parking pad, those two that right. were just on the screen both had room for three cars in the driveway. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are extending their parking pads. So this is just what you can expect when you're moving in to this area, some older style homes in this community. The next community we're going to check out is called Mantua. Mantua is a cool community because, I mean, this is a selfish reason, but they have a tennis center with a swim center, but I, I'm really, I play tennis, so I love that they have a tennis center. I think they have like eight tennis courts. Uh, they even have like some tiered seating as well. So if you want to have a friendly match and show off your skills, there's a place for that. Now he knows this because a few years ago, we were actually thinking of relocating and Mantua was one of the subdivisions that I had narrowed down on search. And so I actually really like Mantua. It's a community of all single family homes, mostly older homes built, you know, between the fifties and the seventies. But I mean, just a range of styles, you know, split level, split foyer, ramblers. Those are all of the older homes. But then they also have some newer communities as well, some colonials and some craftsmen that have been built in like the last 20 to 30 years. The reason that I was drawn to Mantua is it's a really nice wooded area. You can get catch a little bit of nature, you know, wouldn't be surprised if I saw a fox or a deer walking by. It's a really nice community. Um, it's one of those new construction projects. It's one of those crafts when I was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know what I don't like about the area? What um, don't you like? I'm not a big fan of these tear down, like these new builds on a, on a lot like this. I don't like when there's just this one craftsman mm -hmm. in the neighborhood with all of these other older homes. That's just not appealing to me. Um, but you know, some of these homes are they're nice you sizes. know, they're nice sizes on really nice size lot. And in another segment, I'll tell you guys why I really like this neighborhood. It's going to be one of the other topics we talk about in just a few minutes. Well, just to kind of talk more about the teardown situation, that's one of the problems that if you live in Fairfax County, you're going to face is that you don't really have a place to buy new construction really, because most of Fairfax County is developed. And also, if you did buy new construction in Fairfax County, it's going to be in some weird nook yeah, so behind a grocery store or something like that, it, yeah. by a power plant or something like that. So like just a little, they just find a little sliver of land and, and they'll they just, just throw up like 10 townhomes, up about five houses. single families and call it a subdivision. Right, so um, I think that if you consider what you could purchase, right? Would you purchase in those type of subdivisions? Or if you have the money to buy a $700,000 tear down and put your craftsman or your new construction property there, mm -hmm. now you're in an established community. So now you have established trees, you have some sidewalks. You have more than four neighbors. That's true. So, and in this neighborhood, you know, a lot of these older homes are gonna go in like that $700,000 range. Right. And then some of those new builds and not new construction, meaning like you're buying it built from 2021. I mean, something that was built within like the last decade or two. Right. Those are probably going to be closer to like that 1.2 range, right? Exactly, exactly. But it's a super cute community. Yeah. Like I said, we were thinking about moving from Kingstown to Mantua, but we just decided to keep the boys with their current friends. It was on my short list. Right. It was on my short list. Now that we finished up with Mantua, we're going to move over to Fair Lakes. That's going to be our final community that we talk about now. Fair Lakes is going to be the most western part of the Fairfax area. It borders the Centerville area. I would say that it has all of the creature comforts, every creature comfort you could want. When he says creature comforts, he really just means like every commercial restaurant, big box store you could think of. So they have, you know, Costco's, Sam's, there's DSW, Bed Bath & Beyond, right. PetSmart, all of the restaurants that have commercials, you know, Olive Garden and Applebee's, yes. it has all of that. And I think that that kind of works for the target demographic for the area. It exactly. is a, like a suburban, mixed area a lot of young professionals live in that area um so you're going to see a lot more uh, apartments condos and townhouses a lot of the townhouses are still going to be even condo ownership versus just traditional fee simple ownership again i think that it works for the demographic that is targeting exactly. um and you you were saying you know that it's you know so far west but for the price right compared to other places that's pretty reasonable it right yes yes so a lot of times uh in our area or in the northern virginia area the further west you go, the more 
affordable, you know, what, what that, whatever that means to you, affordable mm -hmm. things become. And so this area is going to be more affordable and that's why condos, townhouses, that's what you see in this particular area. Yeah, and also there's less space, right? Cause there's so much retail space. There's not really the room in Fair Lakes to have like single family homes on large right. lots like that. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so we just finished up talking about all of the different communities, but some people are only interested in new construction. Mm -hmm. Well, Fairfax is a great place to find new construction. Now, it's not going to be, you know, it's not plentiful. Right, right. You can find some new construction. You know, we alluded to that uh, when we were talking about Mantua. There's not a whole lot of new construction, but you can find some places. Exactly. We actually have a client that's actually purchasing in the Pender Oaks subdivision right over here. So pretty close to the Pender Brook uh, Golf Club. This is going to be condos and condos, townhouses. Condos and townhouses, mm -hmm. right? And they start, I think our client is in for it at like 800 for the townhouse, mm -hmm. but the condos start at 500, which I would say that that's about like the what you what the going rate is for yeah. new construction right now. I mean that's just one of a few because this same builder is actually building some single families close to that million dollar price range over a little bit closer to Penderbrook. Right. Um, and on top of that, there are nearly a dozen other new construction sites in Fairfax, either in the middle of construction or coming soon. But again, if you zoom in a little bit on that Pender Oaks, you'll see what we were talking about earlier, where it's just like a small area, it's just a few streets, right. you know, whereas a lot of established subdivisions, you're talking about a couple miles or a few hundred homes. And here you're just talking about a couple of streets. So it's not gonna be as big um, as the established communities that we saw in some of the other areas. Exactly, exactly. And they were able to fit a lot of uh, I mean, properties. They, in they get them space. in there. They not a lot of green space for a lot of these new construction, but um, but some of them are, you know, have amenities, which this one does. At least this one has a pool. Right. A lot of times these new constructions, when they're only building, you know, six to 12 or some other small number like that, is just a house. That's it. Right. No HOA, no amenities. At least that's cool about this one is, although it is a smaller subdivision, it at least has some amenities, exactly. um, which I know our buyer is thankful for. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break just to see where you're at, right? Like if you're from the Northern Virginia area of Fairfax County or or Fairfax the area or the city of Fairfax let us know down below in the comment section by typing Fairfax and what do you love about living in this area my name is Abraham Walker I'm a real estate agent in the Northern Virginia area and this is my wife Crystal she assists on the team she handles all of the administrative parts of the business so she is the back of the house I am the front of the house and we are doing these videos to I would say like this is like an interview for us right yeah this is a way for you to get to meet us before you work with us right sure you can read some blog posts sure you can look at an ad or click on an ad on one of the popular search portals or you could check out this video and you see like you know how we work together on these videos yeah how we talk, how we communicate. I mean, this is it. This is the real deal right this here. This is it. This is how we work together. So you can see if you want to work with us. And if you do, make sure you check out the link down below for the perfect home questionnaire. You'll fill out uh, the contact sheet. Right. We'll reach out to you, you know, find out what you're looking for when you plan on moving and hopefully we can be of assistance. Excellent. And if that is too long for you, you can also put the phone number and email address right there. So. You can call, text, or email, and uh, one of us will respond. So thanks so much for watching this video up to this point. Let's get back to the show. So no matter where you live in Fairfax, the commute is going to be a bit of an issue just because, I mean, in North Virginia, there's lots of traffic and it continues to become worse and worse as the area grows. Distance wise, Fairfax is about 19 miles from the White House or from the DC metro area. And it's gonna be about 19 miles from Dulles. So the Dulles Tech Corridor, you're about 12 miles from Tyson's and just under 15 miles from the Pentagon. You know, I'd love to be able to say it's gonna take you 30 minutes or an hour to get from to either of these places. But honestly, you just never know what traffic in the area. I would say if you're heading to DC or the Pentagon, you're probably looking at 45 minutes at least. And it's really gonna depend on where you are within Fairfax because it is the biggest area in Fairfax County. And so, you know, if you're out far west like Fair Lakes, of course, that's gonna be different than people who are closer in, like the people who are in Merrifield um, or Mantua. So just make sure you're checking that out. I will say one great thing about Fairfax, of course, there's the Orange Line Metro. But in addition to that, they have a lot, and I mean like close to a dozen 
bus lines. So if you don't wanna drive in every day, there are options, you know, you can take the bus all the way into the city or you take the bus to the nearest metro station. Lots of options for those who wanna take public transit if you're looking to get around that 45 minute to an hour drive each way. Great reporting, Crystal. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be the schools in Fairfax. And usually we like to go into a little bit of detail about the schools that serve the different areas, but I'm not gonna really have a chance to do that so much for Fairfax for one reason and one reason only. Um, there are a lot of schools in Fairfax. There are seven high schools that service the Fairfax area. I'll let you know what they are, but you have to realize that with each high school, there's a middle school, and then there are like five to six elementary schools in that pyramid. So of those high schools, there are gonna be a few that are like top rated. Um, four of them are gonna be in like the top 10 according to US News. Um, those schools are gonna be Marshall, Woodson, Chantilly, and Oakton. Um, a little earlier in the video, I alluded to why we were thinking of moving to Mantua, and it was actually because I was interested in one of those schools, enrolling our boys in one of those schools. Um, and so that's how we came upon Mantua. So with all those different high schools, it's really confusing because a number of them are named for different areas, right? So just off the top of my head, there's Oakton, Chantilly, and Falls Church High, and Fairfax High. All four of those are in that list of the seven high schools. Right. All four of those are towns in Fairfax County. So you would just assume, hey, Oakton High. Like folks who live in Oakton. That's my school. Chantilly High. Right. Folks who live in Chantilly. And that's true, but then there's also parts of Fairfax that feed to those schools. And uh, it's just like you can move a couple blocks over and be in a different school pyramid. And that is why I always tell parents, I know when I've done research myself, when I was looking for schools for my kids, I always tell parents, put the address in the Fairfax County uh, school boundary locator map. Because when you put the home address in, it will tell you what school they'll go to for every grade level. And I hate to say it, but even in Fairfax County, where I love the schools, some of the schools just aren't rated as highly as the others. They're different. Um, they're different. Right. And so I definitely think that you should check out the boundary locator and see if the schools in that area match up to the criteria that you have for your family. Exactly, so when you're searching for properties online, hopefully you're using our website, <laughs> right? Right, anyway, um, when you're searching for properties online, don't take whatever is in the MLS as gospel, right? Yeah. Like you wanna make sure you take that address, right? Whatever address you're interested in, put it in the school boundary locator before, really before you even go see the property. Absolutely. Just to make sure if schools are important to you, right? Like yeah, a, a if that's a priority, priority yes. it's a priority for a lot of people. Um, and if it is, you definitely should check it out beforehand and just be mindful that boundary maps are redrawn uh, every summer. Well, it doesn't happen every summer, but they're looked at every summer. So around like July. So you wanna make sure you check that out because what you see in the MLS or what you may see on a website may not have been updated yet because we don't know when the MLS updates that. So that's why we always tell our clients, if schools are a priority, just check out the boundary locator map. It's a huge help, huge help. As a parent, I really appreciate it. The next thing to do is don't make a decision on where you're going to move inside of the Fairfax County area. I want you to click the video that's right above Crystal's head. That is actually going to be our playlist that goes throughout the entire Fairfax County area. We're going to cover every different location, tell you what's unique about the area, tell you what you need to look out for. So that's it. That's it. That is everything you need to know before moving to Fairfax inside of Fairfax County.